dignitaries on the dais, Sri Jain Chaudhary, Director General NSG, Dr. A. Didar Singh, Secretary General Fiki, Sri G. K. Pillai, Chair, Fiki Homeland Security Committee, Mr. Rahul Rishi, Partner Ernst & Young, Dr. Vivek Lal, Co-Chair, Fiki Homeland Security Committee, and my dear friends, first and foremost, I thank Fiki and Dr. Hedidar Singh for having taken us, taken us, that is the Karnataka State Police as a supporting partner for this Fiki Homeland Security Conference. I have been associated with this conference for the last four years and gave my technological framework for safe and secure cities in the year 2011, which has gone through a large number of tests and arguments and uh, disagreements and finally has nearly come to stay. If we take this day, in the evolution of terrorism, I think the downing of MS-17 once again brings to the fore that policing has all of a sudden graduated from a very micro level police station policing to a global level policing where the consequences and the acts of nearly every partner affects the global village. So a very delineated policing which we have, leave aside what uh, our ex-Home Secretary was talking about is the state level and the union having difference of opinion with regards to the powers which has been vested in the police and who controls and in which manner and what agencies come to the fore. Leave aside that, even at the true operational functional level, the type of disconnect which we have I think that is creating most of the problems and putting into four ICT in a big manner does not seem to be the panacea to whatever we have been aspiring to achieve. As soon as Fiki getting into the homeland security scenario, I think this is one single fact which affects every single individual on the face of this earth is life and liberty and thus counterterrorism affects every single individual on the face of this earth. Taken as a corollary or directly proportional to that is the enterprise, the health, success and the comfort level of an enterprise precisely depends on the law and order situation of that particular state and the nation. I think all of you would appreciate that it will be very difficult to do business in Ukraine or in Israel or uh, not in Israel but Syria and places of that nature. Presently, Homeland Security has a market of around 9 billion US dollars in this country. Unfortunately, both from the governmental sector and from the private sector, we are not able to find that connect. I'll give you one simple example. We don't have any city in this country with a city-based video surveillance system with video analytics. We have some small, isolated, semi-successful or unsuccessful uh, experiments. So it might be Surat or Sarojini Nagar here or a couple of other places. But no city in this country is on a city-based video surveillance system with video analytics. And if we take a very uh, standard benchmark of around 40 to 50,000 cameras on a network, which is real-time and dynamic, I think the cost would be anything in the tune of some 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 crores. I, I don't think I'll be able to give even a ballpark figure. So that is the business opportunity which is throwing up for uh, partners. Without name, naming a company, so it has invested around 2,000-3,000 crores in say geospatial technology. But we are not able to connect that capability of that company to the requirement of the internal security in this country. And beside, without that geospatial connect, it becomes extremely difficult in the present day world to do any effective policing what of, of whatsoever nature, starting from a beat to counter-terrorism. <coughs> The base of counter-terrorism is a technological framework. We started with mega-city mega policing in 2005, partially successful. Until unless we reach a plug-and-play mechanism, till the time we don't have a technological framework for safe and secure cities which finally gets diffused over the, over the whole countryside and covers the whole nation. 
it would become extremely difficult and our response to this whole exercise would at best remain patchy. The technological framework in half a minute is as follows. First is a command and control system on C4I framework or C4I software that is command, control, computer, computing, communication with interoperability and intelligence. The second is cyber security with the interception systems. Third is video surveillance, city-based video surveillance with video analytics. Fourth is Tetra. So in every single uh, uh, terror incident, the communication fails. Tetra is parallel to GSM created by the same organization that is the European Telecommunication Union and is uh, very religiously and uh, serving all the interests of public safety networks. It failed in Commonwealth Games, but that cannot be a reason why Tetra should not come to India. So as of now, Tetra eludes India and India eludes Tetra. The next is the geospatial technology and finally a homeland security architecture. CCTNS, NatGrid and all these other architectures which are in place finally get integrated into homeland security architecture. These technological platforms can be there in our mega cities. These get integrated into what we call as a national homeland security resource base and incident support system. So that is the vision which I am talking about and that is the vision which can be carried uh, further. And there is a huge amount of glimmer of hope. It is not that it is not there. We have IT ecosystem in place in Karnataka. I have been in touch with Director Indian Institute of Science and he wants to work on video analytics for homeland security. Besides that, there is a National Center of Excellence coming up in IIT Mumbai, I have been told, and when the session in the afternoon, the concerned professor who is head of Department of Electrical Engineering would also be coming here and delivering a lecture in that particular session. Coming to homeland security as a concept, as a thought, before I end up my small uh, speech or lecture. Homeland security emanated after 9-11. What is the basic concept? Basic concept is that the homeland security is a counter-terror mechanism. And once you create that counter-terror mechanism, which is of a global level, both technology, functionally and legally, you are able to take care of the, the worst of the crimes and you are also able to dynamically use the same system for your day-to-day -day crimes. It started with what we call as the Patriot Act and it took 13 months to create Department of Homeland Security in October 2002 and that was the integration of 21 or 23 different departments seamlessly merged only for the purpose of Homeland Security and the biggest administrative integration which has taken place in the history of the US. From then we have the Stafford Act, we have used around 4,000 investigators who, who were technologists and only 3,000 police investigators in the 9-11 uh, uh, investigation and till around uh, Times uh, uh, Square issue and the Boston bombings, I think the uh, Homeland Security US had unblemished uh, career and whatever small issues came up, they have been able to tackle in a manner which is certainly enviable for the whole world. By the year 2007-2008, it was clearly proven that Department of Homeland Security has been a singular success in counter-terror operations across the globe. It's high time. We have been into this. We have safe and secure nation and large sort of uh, large uh, conferences and workshops. It's high time. We bring it to reality. And the model is already there in place with some amount of customization, similar circumstances, same ecosystem, technology as being a force multiplier, I think we can deliver. Thank you.